Hey everybody, welcome back to GWN, I'm Noctair, your host. Today I'll be continuing my uh, Q&A series, Hey Noct, with a discussion of upgrades. Uh, you know, why we upgrade, what we upgrade, when we upgrade, things like that. Um, I've, had, I've had a lot of questions on a variety of topics, and probably the most common question I see is, what should I upgrade next? And the, the answer is really, it's not as simple as you might think. Um, there's a lot of things that factor into what you upgrade and, and when you should do that upgrade. See, choosing upgrades is a tricky thing to do in a relatively new game like the Builder Base. And even though it was released a year ago, the fact of the matter is that it really is still in its initial release mode. I mean, Builder Hall 8 just hit not long ago, and a lot of players are running on the cutting edge of the game. In a more established game, say like the Home Village, for example, which has been around for five years, there are a bunch of levels to go through already, and a large player base that's just kind of slogging her way through each one of the levels. Now, you'll hear me often talk about the meta. What exactly is the meta? Uh, some will call it out as an acronym, the Most Effective Tactic Available. And that may or may not be correct, but it does accurately describe the general use of the term in gaming. Meta refers to the strategies that are used in the game, both the most effective as well as the most commonly used among the player base. This is what you'll be defending the most against and likewise what your attacks will most commonly run into. At the time of this video, the Builder Base meta centers around ground attacks at Builder Hall 8, specifically Cannon Carts and Boxer Giants. Each level of the Builder Base has had its own meta, and that changes over time. For example, when Builder Hall 8 first hit the pavement, we were still running with the Builder Hall 7 meta of beta minions and dropships, you know, minion drops, and in no time at all, that switched over to cannon carts and was shortly thereafter improved by uh, Boxer Giants. Now, these meta changes really will dictate what your upgrade path should be, both for troops as well as defenses. Now, as I mentioned, Builder Hall 8 started off with air in the dominant position. So the first thing a lot of folks upgraded was their firecrackers and air bombs. When that switched off to cannon carts, uh, the defenses to upgrade were the Teslas, both the hidden Teslas as well as the Mega Tesla, and the double cannons. The defensive upgrade path follows the offensive upgrade path very closely, especially since offense is typically going to be upgraded a lot quicker than your defense. Now, the meta can change really fast, and in the case of Builder Hall 8, it did. Supercell massively beefed the ground game by adding units to the army camps at uh, level 16. A fifth bomber, a fourth boxer giant, a third can cart, even two more sneaky archers to bring the total to 12. The player base considered the value of each of these improvements and adjusted to take greater advantage of the new numbers. What's more, the meta actually varies depending upon your level of play both in terms of trophy ranking as well as the Builder Hall level itself. The most common base designs, attack strategies, and defensive levels that you see at the top of the leaderboards are entirely different from what you'll see in the 3,000, 4,000, and 5,000 trophy uh, uh, ranking ranges. Season reset notwithstanding, of course. Players in the lower 3,000 trophy ranges see a lot of Night Witch attacks. Upper 3,000s to lower 4,000s, you see a greater mix, but air is really very common. The upper 4,000s and beyond are almost exclusively ground attacks, although air does still sneak in there a little bit. But the cannon cart strategies typically hold sway. The top leaderboard players, their attacks tend to be, of course, ground, and they focus on either a mixture of troops or those that are known to provide more consistent results at any given time during the, uh, the game itself. The Builder Hall level is the other side of that coin, and um, if you look at each Builder Hall level, you'll see that each one has kind of a dominant troop. So, for example, at Builder Hall 5, baby dragons were the thing to be. I mean, people would just drop them around the base and proceed to get good solid two stars, if not three stars, right? At Builder Hall 6, though, that wasn't the case. And the Night Witch came into play, and you started seeing a lot of players using both uh, Mitch as well as just straight mass Night Witch. By Builder Hall 7, the dropship grabbed the highlights there and became the dominant troop along with beta minions to form up minion drops. And as I mentioned already, Builder Hall 8 is pretty much owned by cannon cards and boxer giants right now. Like I said, current meta always, always, always should factor heavily into your upgrade choices. And it's generally the prevailing factor in my upgrade decisions. Now, 
that's not to say that's the only thing that I consider, especially when you look at how many of us rush. So I like to look at the, um, the strength of my troops and defenses. If you, like me, didn't upgrade cannon carts early on before the buff and increased units that we saw here at Boulder Holly, it's going to be a pretty long haul. It's going to be a painful process getting those things upgraded. Under such conditions, it may more, make more sense to focus on a secondary strat like, say, minion drops so you can pull decent daily loot. One of my games had level 1 cannon carts and, and drop ships beta minions a night, which is raw rate over 14. Even though cannon cars were the new meta and absolutely rocking it up and down the charts, and I mean, I really wanted to get them upgraded, going from level 1 to level 16, that would take a month and a half. Plus, my boxer giants were still only level 6. Getting them up to snuff would mean another month or more beyond that. I, I just couldn't see taking two months at the beginning of a new builder hall level just to develop a viable meta attack when I already had these air attacks ready to go and they, they were level 14. They just needed two additional levels for each one of the troops to really make them kick some serious you-know-what. So I focused first on what I had, then shifted gears over to the meta attack. On the defensive side, I always upgraded firecrackers and air bombs at the beginning of the new Builder Hall until Builder Hall 8. That's where I hit the Teslas first, including the Mega Tesla. But on my more heavily rushed games, I knew that pouring my gold into the Mega Tesla before upgrading lower level defenses made about as much sense as pursuing the meta attack at the expense of my overall game. The Mega Tesla is absolutely devastating to cannon card attacks once it reaches level 8. My level 4 and level 5 point defenses though, they're more versatile and, and they held greater damage potential, uh, potential than just the one defense, so I upgraded them a while before focusing on the Mega Tesla. Uh, these choices may seem to buck conventional wisdom, but they're really, they're actually all about getting the biggest bang for the buck. Those who are able to max a level before the new one is released can choose their way forward, but for those who are either free to play or light gemmers, it's important to carefully plan each upgrade to gather the greatest benefit. On that same note, there's a lot to be said for bucking the system. While everybody's setting up defenses to thwart the ground-based attacks from cannon carts and boxer giants, that tends to leave them a bit more vulnerable to air attacks. Base designs that defend well against cannon cart strats don't defend well against mini drops, especially when everybody's neglecting to upgrade their defenses like you know their air bombs and their uh, the firecrackers. So to get a handle on the metal for, meta for your BH level and trophy ranking, uh, you really need to just kind of be observant of your own game. You know, see what's see what's in your battle logs, see what uh, kind of attacks you're seeing, take a look at other people around you at what they've got in their army camps and how they're building their bases. I regularly view my battle log to see what attacks I'm seeing, and that helps me form up my upgrade plan, which constantly changes on all my games. So, for Builder Hall A players with like a level 5 or better defense that hang around, we'll say 3,500 to 4,500 trophies, I'm going to usually say, hey, get your, roost, your roaster, your giant cannon, your multi mortar to level 8, then switch gears to your hidden Teslas and mega Teslas, then hit the double cannons, circle back and hit your air defenses, arch ultra towers, and uh, cannons. I always suggest maxing out the key attack is first to get that going right away. And for those who are less than a level 5, I say, hey, go out and get yourself up to at least a level 5 defense and then do the same thing. Now you can see this in action on my Clash of Hyper Rush Project game. That game went from brand new on March 15th to a level 4 defending base just last week, June 1st. And th this is the general reasoning that I use whenever I do my upgrades. So, thanks a lot for sticking around to the end of the video. Uh, comments, questions down below, or email me at noctergmail.com. Hit the subscribe button, hit like if you enjoyed the video. Again, thank you for sticking to the end, and I will be back soon with even more Clash of Clans builder-based content for everybody. Y'all take care, and keep on clashing on. Bye-bye now.